All right, it's time. So let's continue. We finished the chapter three. For chapter four, again, refer to your product six and seven. Okay, it's basically just、uh, one theme. When you have a harmonic oscillator, what will happen if you put force into it? Okay, six and seven will help you to do this, and.、Uh, With the coding capacity you have right now, handling non-homogeneous cases is not hard at all. So you will have a chance to see what's going to happen and what the solution looks like. Okay, so we、we'll、move to chapter five. Finally, we will be handling non-linear systems. What we did in chapter、um, three is we handled linear systems. Okay, not only we handled the linear system, we handled the linear system homogeneous, which means you cannot have a plus b here. Okay, homogeneous. And finally, it has only constant coefficient. That's the only reason everything can be written as a matrix. But then we can give you all the solutions, and moreover, we can tell you if you have an equilibrium at zero zero. We can analyze the behavior of. The equilibrium zero zero. That's basically what we did in chapter two,、uh, chapter three. <clears throat> okay. Usually, the equilibrium will be at zero zero. The reason is because if you set、um, the reason is because if you set a y equal to zero. It, number one, it always give you a solution y equals zero zero, which is the trivial solution. Okay. Moreover, usually this one does does not have any non-trivial solution if a is not degenerate. Then, no non-trivial solution. So you will have only one equilibrium. That's why we. We were able to actually classify every possible cases we have, simply because we have non-degenerate case, and we can write the whole system into a matrix.、Okay. Now, of course, we move on. We go to non-linear dynamics. Then you have the new thing. Again, non non autonomous. No, 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 autonomous systems. There's no t. Okay. This time, there's no guarantee your f and g are linear. Of course, it won't be a constant coefficient. Some example: predator and the prey. Okay, we have something like this. Let's use the one in the book. Okay, we have done this before. If you take a closer look, this is nothing but what we had before. We have the interaction term. Okay, they kill each other. Both are negative, means they are competing. Which is a little bit different than what we had before for rabbit and fox.、Hmm? 
Okay, before everything here was positive. That means if you have a lot of fox, uh, rabbits and a fox, actually the fox increase faster because the rabbit provide the food. So it's predator and prey. This time, this is negative. That means the fox has does some dead damage on the rabbit. Meanwhile, the rabbit does some damage on the, on the fox too. From here, you can see it's not about predator and the food anymore. It's more about you kill me and you, I kill you. So it's more like a competing species, okay? Due to the negative effect for here and here. Clearly, this is not linear. We have x times y, we have x square inside here, and we have y square here, so it's not linear. Moreover, the first term here come from logistic growth. You have a growth rate of two, you have one minus x over two, and this two here is basically the capacity of the environment, which you cannot go past beyond. Okay, we will take this one as an example to show how to analyze the properties of nonlinear system. Okay, in general, it's difficult to analyze nonlinear systems. Okay. So what we will do is we will focus on the equilibrium first. Let's focus on equilibriums first. At least we can talk about something. That is the long-term behavior. Okay, we want to talk about is if it's a sink, if it's a source, and so on. Okay, so 5.1, equilibriums. Of nonlinear systems. Okay, well, several things, number one, can you still find the equilibrium well same definition, right? Equilibrium is when everything stops changing. At the equilibrium, your x prime and y prime should be equal to zero. Before, you have a linear system, so you just solve this one equals zero. That's where you got the equilibrium zero, zero from linear algebra, the trivial solution. Now, you can do the same thing. It's just solving it won't be that easy anymore. But the logic is clear. Just set to be this one to be zero. Set this one to be zero. Okay. Now what you have here is the first one, the second one, okay, so you have the following cases, x equals zero, okay, y equals zero. That's the first possibility. Second, x equal to zero, three minus two y, minus zero equals zero. This give you x equal to zero and y equals three. Number three, you have this equals zero and the y equals zero. This tells you x equals two. And finally, you have this equals zero and this equals zero. This one eventually tells you okay. you can solve it.
So the logic is the same. The only difference, this time when you solve for zeros, it's harder. Moreover, sometimes you don't have the trivial solution. There's no guarantee zero, zero is always going to be the solution. But just go ahead and solve it. So for this case, we have four equilibriums. Is there everything okay here? Just algebra. Okay. There's no guarantee you can always solve it because solving an equation can be hard. But once you can solve it, the idea are the same. We have four equilibriums. Now if you take a look. Well, that's pretty nice. We got one equilibrium here, zero, zero, one equilibrium here, one equilibrium here, and one equilibrium here. We have four of them. Okay. Moreover, if you think about it, even though it's nonlinear, we can still draw the vector field. So somehow we can still draw the small arrows here and streamlines here. Just by telling from the graph, this is going to be a sink. This is going to be a source, zero, zero. Uh, this one's kind of hard to tell. Okay. And this one's kind of hard to tell. Sounds good. So our next job is try to see, okay, is there a quick way to tell if something is a sink, some equilibrium is a source, and some equilibrium is a settle as before. Okay? Before it was doable because we have a linear system, we can look at eigenvalues. This time we don't have a matrix even. We cannot do an eigenvalue. But let's see what's going on. So number two. Analyzing. the equilibriums. Basically, we want to know sink, source, or settle. Let's write down what we do before when we have linear systems. This is what we do. We draw two straight lines because it's linear. Second, this one is always zero, zero. Next, we do the eigenvalues. Then we know sink, source, whatever information we need. And sometimes we may even have rotations. What will the equilibrium of nonlinear dynamics looks like? It's going to be very similar. Except because it's not linear, the axis I draw here won't be straight anymore. It will be something like this. OK, it's not straight. And you still have those kind of small things like, yeah, going this way and going that way. And moreover, things like that, uh, things like this. Moreover, this is not going to be zero, zero anymore. It can be anything. It can be one, one, it can be two, three, it can be anything. Make sense over? Okay, 
Now what we will do is, we will try to analyze this. You just want to know the direction of the arrows, right? We will take this one. We will somehow take this one and change it to the one before. Okay? That involves doing two things. Number one, you want to shift everything to zero, zero. Because linear can only handle zero, zero. So at least now I can change this. I say, well, after I do the shift, it becomes zero, zero again. Second, I want to locally just add zero, zero to replace the nonlinear one by a linear one. At zero, zero, replace the nonlinear system by a linear system. Once we have the linear system, we know how to do it. The key here is you want to make sure the nonlinear system and the linear system you choose behave exactly the same only at this point. If you're a little bit away from this point, that won't be accurate, but right at this point, they will be the same. Sounds good? Okay, think about it, we have done this before. Here's a curve, but locally, I think it's a straight line. How do you do it? I take the derivative. I locally replace this curve by a straight line. Can you do that? Only at this point at some place very close to this point. You go a little bit beyond, they're not the same anymore, but only here, they will be very similar to each other. Sounds good? Okay, that will be the tangent line. In calculus three, that will be the tangent plane. So the idea here, we are very, very familiar with this. This is called linearization. Okay. Take the nonlinear, change it to linear. If I'm gonna draw it, and you know how to draw it, you wanna change some curve locally to be linear, you just draw the tangent line. The black one is not linear, the red one is linear. Moreover, at this equilibrium, they behave the same. So if the red one has a sink here, the black one has a sink here. If the red one has a source here, the black one has a source here. And because the red one is linear, we do the eigenvalue, eigenvector thing. It's doable. Is the idea clear? All right. Now let's just write them down through the example. Okay. Let's start with this. Mm. Where is it? This one has an equilibrium at one, one. Now we want to know if it's a sink or not. So the first thing we want to do is shift one, one to zero, zero. How do you do that? You let u equals x minus one, you let v equals y minus one. Okay. Then u prime equals x minus one, uh, x prime. v prime equals y prime. So the whole system here can be changed to u prime equals this, v prime equals this. And every time you see an x, just replace it by u plus one. Probably I need more, more room, okay. Let's call this one star. Star then, change to. Now 
whenever you see a x prime, you do a u prime. You see a x, you do u plus one. One minus u plus one minus u plus one times y, which is v plus one. v prime equals three v plus one. One minus v plus one divided by three uh, minus two u plus one v plus one. This is basically the same system, but you just give it a different name. Clean everything a little bit. 2u plus 2 minus u square minus 2u minus 1 minus uv minus v minus u minus 1. So together, it's going to be... Negative u minus v minus u square minus uv. The second one is going to be 3v plus 3 minus v square minus 2v minus 1 minus 2uv minus 2v minus 2. So they cancel. Three v, two v, v so minus v, minus two u, minus two u v, minus v square. So minus two u, minus v, minus two u v, minus v square. After simplification. Sounds good. Okay, this will be exactly the same system with the change of variable. Now clearly, this one has an equilibrium at one one, uh, at a zero zero. If you take u to be v uh, in u v plane, if you take u to be zero, v to be zero, clearly you have u prime v prime equals zero. Okay, so the shift is done. Now second, how do you replace a nonlinear to linear? Okay, this is zero, zero. You want this. To make the notation easier, I'm going to take this. I use f bar and g bar because f represents for the x, y function. When you change it to uv, they change a little bit, but they are connected. Okay. You want to replace this to this system. No. This is what you want to do. The key is try to find this matrix here. Okay, if it's a little bit confusing, think about easier cases. In one dimension, how do you do linearization again? Basically what you do is you do f x, if this is x zero, y zero, you basically do this.
that's the tangent line. Sounds good. Now in calculus three, if you have two variables in your f, your f become x and y, which depends on two variable. How do you do this linearization again? You do tangent plane. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, that's from calculus three. If you need a remainder, this comes from the tangent plane. If you need a reminder, uh, tangent plane. Or, depending on how you plot, this one come from total differential. which basically tells you if you have a surface. <laughs> which it tilts up. What you do is you add this part and this part together in order to get, let me use blue. This will be the right one, they're the same. But then you paste the blue part here. That will be your total DZ. Where the blue part give you partial F, partial Y, DY. And the red part come from partial F, partial X, DX. If you take this to be DX and this to be DY. Do you recall something like this? Calc three, good dog. Um, just out of curiosity, as we keep going up in dimensions, then do we just get in like for, let's say five dimensions, you just keep increasing the number of. Hold on, let's do four dimension. Taking. Yeah. Let's say I'm I, I'm trying to say like, uh, are you asking this? Then basically you have partial f, partial x, dx, plus partial mm -hmm. f, partial y, dy, plus partial, partial f, partial z, dz. And the answer mm -hmm. is yes. The reason is because your x, y, z are chosen to be orthogonal. As long as they're orthogonal to each other, this one is actually guaranteed by Pythagorean theorem. Okay, think about this. What's going to happen? Mm, how do I do that? So think about this two dimensional domain and one more dimension, so three dimension, right? Your domain is X, Y. You're trying to say going from here to here, how much did I change? Sounds good. Can you see you can decompose it to going from here to here, how much you changed? And then going from here to here, how much you changed? But each time the first change is in the X direction, the second change is in the Y direction. And because they're orthogonal, you can simply just add them together. Okay, if they're not orthogonal, you cannot do this. But you can do the projection either way. So it's doable. 
if you think about it, this is also how we define partial derivative. Actually, partial derivative is defined in this way. Right, going from the left to the right, going from the bottom to the top, you have two changing rates. Okay, you just add them together. Good. All right. So I want to talk about that. Mm, maybe. Just one more thing I want to mention here. Do you realize this is this? Okay. That means if you write this one into like a tensor type of definition, a matrix definition, this one's diagonal. Simply means these two are orthogonal to each other. So even if you have axes which are not orthogonal to each other, you can still have a formula for them. The only difference is going to be these two cannot be zero anymore. You will have the correlation term. It's not too careful, but it's called correlation term to put them together. Okay. That means if you, in, if you increase your x, your y actually increase with you. They are not totally orthogonal. Okay, I think that's good enough. All right. Now, if this formula is okay, that's the tangent plane. Now, let's go back to this. Now, you, you prime. Okay. At uv equals zero, zero. You want to replace this to be a linear term. Can you see that? This minus not UV. Try to compare what's in the red box and what's here by taking x0, y0 equals 0, 0 in that former. Sounds good. They're exactly the same, okay? Except when you see x, you change it to be u. When you see y, you change it to be v. And when you see the x zero, y zero, because you already shifted everything, it's just zero, zero. Yeah. Sounds good. You can do the same thing for v. T bar. bar. We got these two.
Now let's clean it a little bit. What's this? It's zero. Why? Because I am at the, my equilibrium. That's exactly how I found my equilibrium. I set the right hand side to be zero, right? All right. Then what's on the left? If you write them into vectors, it's nothing but this. What's on the right? Well, u minus zero is just u, this is v. This is nothing but uv and uv. <laughs> Except what you should put here is partial f, partial u, at zero, zero. Partial f, partial v, at zero, zero. Then, the original nonlinear system is replaced by this linear system where the matrix is given by the thing I just wrote down here. We did it. Locally, this one become a linear system. Of course, this one only works at zero, zero. Sounds good. Okay, this is done by linearization. Once you have the linearization, it's nothing but a constant times u plus a constant times v, a constant times u plus a constant times v, then suddenly you have a matrix. This one doesn't work everywhere. It only works for points which are very close to zero, zero. And we use a lot of properties. Number one, it's at zero, zero. Number two, zero, zero is equilibrium. That's how we can cancel out this term here. We can cancel out this term here. But once you clean everything up, this is the case. All right. We use the letter J here. Can you see why we use the letter J here? What does J stand for? Calculus three. Do you recall something like this in Calc 3? The Jacobian. The Jacobian. So J stands for Jacobian. This is exactly Jacobian. Except for in Calc 3, when you do it, you are trying to do it with the integral. So you only care about the determinant of the Jacobian. But now you have the whole Jacobian. Okay. By the way, what does Jacobian do? Now you probably start to have an idea. This is what's happening with Jacobian. You know, whenever you have some domain, nice domain in three dimension, usually it's orthogonal and you have one, zero, zero. How do I do that? Should I do that? Should I not do that? No, let's not do that. Let's just draw it in 2D. 
That's the best thing you can hope for, right? Everything is normalized and you have a 90 degree here. Now think about on any kind of surface, which doesn't have to be flat. It can, can be curved. Now you just pick a point here. Then very likely you will have another coordinate system. It's just this coordinate system is bended. Sounds good. So all the linear, all the vectors are here, will become the vectors here. And all you need to do is find a linear transformation from this coordinate system to that coordinate system. Then every single operation you do here can be done in this nice coordinate. And that linear transformation is described by Jacobi. Okay, so basically it's a change of coordinate system. So now if you think about what you did before in calculus three, it's not too careful here. You want to do something dx, dy, you find this is too hard. So what you do is you do a change of variable. Before that was xy plane, now it's uv plane. Okay. You change it to be du, dv. But now you know you did a linear transformation from here to here. A linear transformation may make your area bigger or smaller. It will rotate the thing, it will flip the thing, it will shear the thing, it will also make it bigger or smaller. But now what you want to do is, you simply just want to cancel that thing, otherwise your integration become bigger. So that's why you multiply with the Jacobian. Did I do the right way? Should be X. Ah! I don't remember the right way, too bad. Is X over U or U over X? Should be X over U. Let me double check. I'm recording this, so better be careful. Sixteen point fifteen. Change of variable. Yeah, X U. Good. So that's exactly what we're trying to do here. If it's so hard to integrate everything in this thing, why don't you just change to integrate everything like this? But then when you do that, you do a linear transformation. But when you do the linear transformation, not only you change the shape of it, you also change the size of it. The determinant will capture the size. You just need to divide by the size. As long as the size is not changed everything else you change the shape the integration stay the same they have the same volume all right that's some side topic for jacobin and a little taste of differential geometry Somehow, we end up with this. So now let's just uh, go ahead and do it. Let's copy what I have here. Here. This is the original system. Now we know we want to linearize it to make it look like this.
then our job is try to calculate this j. Well, knowing this is f bar, this is g bar, it's pretty easy to do. Partial f bar, partial u is going to be negative one minus two u minus v. Partial f, partial v. Negative one minus u, partial g bar, partial u. Negative two, negative two v, partial g bar, partial v equals So your j is going to be these four. If you plug in uv to be zero, zero. So finally, this system is replaced by this. That's a linearization. All right. Well, there are still some left over to do, but I think we don't have to do it. Once you have something like that, go ahead and find the eigenvalues, find the eigenvectors. Okay, you will know lambda one, you will know lambda two. Both negative, then it's a sink. Both positive, then it's a settle. No, it's a source. And if one negative, one positive, it's a settle. I don't think we need to do that. Okay. Let's summarize what we just did, the procedure. Number one, let u equal x minus x zero and the v equals y minus y zero. In this way, you will shift the equilibrium from here to here to zero, zero. That's step one. The whole system then changed to be u prime and v prime equals f bar uv, which is based on the previous one, but a little bit different. Okay. Second, once you have this new system, what you do is you basically calculate the Jacobian matrix and use that thing to determine the behavior. And that thing looks like this. The first time we go over it, it's long, but from now on, you can simply just do the procedure, which become easy. The key is just try to calculate the derivative. Of course, this has, been done, has to be done at zero, zero. Basically what you do, you change something like that to something like this. wishing that they have the same uh, behavior, sink, source, settle.
Does everything make sense so far? The procedure? Okay. If you are kind of shaking on some of the details, go back, read the notes. I think you can figure it out. The general idea should be um, pretty clear. Of course, we want to do one more step. This is still too complicated. Is there a way we can get the thing directly without having to do the shifting? Because as far as we know, if you have some shape of a surface and all the derivatives come from the shape of the surface, you shift it, you don't shift it, you got the same, exactly the same linear matrix. Kind of makes sense here because it only has something to do with your partial derivative. You shift it, it's still the same x derivative and y derivative, right? So we probably do not have to do the shifting and doing zero, zero, if the only thing we're looking for is just this. So now we can write down the conclusion. The conclusion is, if you do this, oh, hold on. To find this, it's the same to find this. G. Uh, G partial G partial G partial X partial G partial Y at X zero Y zero. In another sense, your Jacobian does not change if you shift the whole thing left and right, because that's basically your tangent plane. So your tangent plane at the zero zero after the shifting is the same as the tangent plane at x0, y0 before you shift. Okay, so it's even better. You don't even have to do step one and two. You just do this one directly. Sounds good? All right, now number three. Let's write down the conclusion. For a system like this, <laughs> not UV, X prime, Y prime. At equilibrium, the linearization of the system at the equilibrium x0, y0 is given by u prime equals j u where j equals so you don't have to worry about the f bar and the g bar and the u and the v because they're the same okay at x0 y0 We went through all the trouble. This will be the conclusion you're looking for. Next time you see something nonlinear, do this directly. You will have J. Once you have J, you have the eigenvalue. Once you have the eigenvalue, you know the behavior. All right, that's all for today.